There are several stories. The first is about a time long ago when a certain Sufi master was wandering the labyrinthine pathways of what is now called the Middle East. And there was a time when he found himself in a little village nestled high up in a mountain and it so happened that this village was located uh, on the mountain which lay between a number of warring countries. So people from each of these countries with their diverse cultures and their diverse faiths and beliefs <coughs> had found themselves seeking uh, uh, safety in this mountain village. So there are a number of different um, kinds of people who had gathered in this village and they lived in kind of a tacit agreement with one another although there was no great harmony between them and <coughs> neighbors didn't speak with neighbors and so forth. But as this uh, Sufi master was wandering through the streets of this village he came across a young boy and from out underneath his cloak he took a drum and he gave it to this small boy. Well, this boy was so delighted to have this drum that he beat it day and night. And of course what happened was none of the neighbors could get any sleep. Now each of them in their own way presented themselves to the parents of this boy to give them some means of shutting him up. But whatever they tried, some bought books to divert him, another tried to teach him the ways of meditation and so forth and so on. But none of them were successful. Uh, maybe for a little while there was a little bit of peace and then he'd go back to his drumming again, wouldn't he? So, as these things happen, the people had to get together to try to find somewhere because they had a, a universal problem that had to be dealt with here. What were they going to do about this drum? So they s agreed to <coughs> seek the assistance of a, a great one. And as it so happened, a great Sufi, you might guess was the same Sufi who gave the boy the drum, to so preempt that, came back into town and he went up to the boy <coughs> And he gave him a hammer and a chisel. <laughs> and he said to the boy, I wonder what's inside that drum. They never had a problem with that drumming again. Now there's that other story about a certain monarch. And he was a very good king. He was very fair. He listened to people's problems and he was able to solve them. For the most part, every day he sat in conference with those who came and dispensed his wisdom and his knowledge. But somehow within himself there was a discontent and he didn't know what it was. So he decided to seek the help of his pundits and his advisors, but none of them had any suggestions that really resonated with him in any way uh, until a certain dervish, a saintly dervish who had been in the palace for some time but for the most part was silent and kept to himself, they said to him, Sire, you have wisdom and knowledge but even kings with wisdom and knowledge need a skill. And immediately this seemed to ring deep within the king. So he decided to call all the artisans 
the leading artisans of his land to his palace to seek that skill that he could learn. So there is the wood carver and and uh, and uh, the, this one and that one and the jeweler and so forth. But after seeing each of these people at work, he decided that he would learn the art of weaving. So he had this great um, weaver who had come to demonstrate the skill of weaving, teach him the art of weaving which he learned very well. He soon became a master a weaver. But you know, as part of this king's life, it was his custom to go out from time to time in to the streets of his people in disguise to learn, to know, to glean what it was that life was for them. And so it happened when he was out one night in his disguise in the company of his Grand Vizier that they were beset by a group of robbers who captured them and took the pair back to their lair. But when they got th them there they found that they had nothing of worth. So the robber chief said, well, we'll just kill them and throw their bodies away. But then the Grand Vizier piped up and he said, wait, my companion is a weaver. If you will spare our life and to allow him to weave, you will become rich. So, as happenstance had it, the king, attached as he was to this skill, always carried with him under his cloak a little miniature loom. So, the Grand Vizier said to the robbers, Let my companion weave a handkerchief which you can take to the palace and guaranteed you will receive 1,000 gold coins for this. Well, of course, the robbers put their hands together in glee and allowed the king to go about his weaving. So the king wove an exquisite handkerchief and within that handkerchief he placed a universal motive and this was given to the robbers who sent one of their band off to the palace. So as soon as the robber arrived at the palace and offered this handkerchief for a thousand gold pieces. This handkerchief was immediately taken to the king's wife, the queen, who immediately recognized the motive within the piece of cloth and gave the thousand gold coins to the messenger to give to the robber. But as soon as the gold coins were given, the queen gave the instructions, follow, send a band of soldiers to follow that man, and there you will find my husband, the king. And of course this is exactly what happened because just as the robber went into his lair and congratulated them for having this wealth, the soldiers arrived on the doorstep 
and of course the king was so delighted to recognize that his wife had seen the motive within the handkerchief that he'd woven which enabled him to be set free. When we put these two stories together what is it that arises for you there's the deep meaning that brings them together. Where do they meet these two stories? So what is it about us now? What is about life for us now? Sure, we've got the street smarts. We can see the body language, we can read the messages in... We've got our wisdom and our knowledge. We know that at any, any given moment, the answer that's needed, the response, is going to arise in us. But what is it? How do we establish from where it arises? What is it? If we don't know this, we will always remain instruments. We will always remain the hole in the flute through which God plays. We have to know what we're about. So what do these stories tell us about that? Where do these stories meet to give us a clue, a gleaning, as to how we can know who we are and what we do? Let them cook for a while. Unlike last week's story, which it was said was that added, that makes it bubble. These are like ingredients that need to go in our pot and be stirred up so that we can discover what it is we're about. The question's been asked, if we're not the pencil with which God writes, nor are we the hole in the flute through which God plays, both being instruments of something, then what are we and what are we about? We're not flotsam and jetsam, we're not just something that is empty and available to whatever comes out at any given moment. What is it about you now? What is it about this place? Again, it continues in that endeavor to understand the nature of emptiness. The nature of emptiness. Emptiness, as we know it, is not what it seems. Thank you. <laughs>